Welcome to video 2 for week 11. In the previous video, I set up the theory of dynamical systems. That theory was a little bit abstract, so I want to do a very specific example of a dynamical system to sort of show you what states are and how we look at the long-term behavior with a system that actually means something. So this is a model called Leslie matrix, and it measures the behavior of an age-structured population. So instead of doing population dynamics where I count the entire population, I now want a population that's separated into age categories. So we've got that separation can happen in all sorts of ways in any number of categories. You could have uh, some kind of small mammal whose life expectancy is four years and separate it into four categories, uh, things that are less than a year old, a year old, two years old, three years old, so forth and so on. Uh, you could have smaller separations if you're using insects that only live for a season, then you might have categories in months. If you're using vertebrates that live much longer than four years, you might have categories that are in decades. But whatever the separation is, you've got a population separated into age categories. And you have variable survivor survival from one age category to the next. So let us let me sort of talk about a small mammal situation to start with, again with four age categories. So to live to your first year, to live to your second year, to live to your third year, all of these are different behaviors. Uh, it can be easier or harder to survive the first year than it is the second year, so I can have different survivals from one age category to the next. I can also have fecundity, and that's the term we use to represent the growth, the birth rates from each age category. And it may be that not age, all age categories will produce offspring. You might need to get to a certain age category before you are, uh, before the the member of the population is of the right age to be able to give birth and produce new offspring. So we have variable fecundity, and these two things get measured as survival and fecundity coefficients. So let me see what this looks like in an actual matrix. So I have a state. My state is the population of each of the four age categories. So this is going to be the youngest, this is going to be the oldest. So if I'm dealing with a small mammal of, with a life expectancy of four years, this will be less than one year old, this will be one to two years old, this will be two to three years old, and this will be three to four years old. So I have on the off diagonal here these survival coefficients. So if I sort of erase this a little bit, if I look at this matrix action, then this S1 is going to be multiplied by WK to give me XK plus one. So X k plus 1 is equal to s1 wk. So this tells me in a time step, in a year say, what percentage of the population in wk survive to the next age category. And they have to move up once because we moved up a time step. You can't stay in the age category and you have to either die or move on to the next age category. So moving down I have these three survival coefficients. s1 from the first to the second, S2 from the second to the third, and S3 from the third to the fourth. And those are all given by just doing the matrix action going across here and down here. Then in the first row, the output of WK plus one, the youngest age category, you can't survive to that. The only way that you end up in the youngest age category in the next step is uh, by some fecundity from the previous age category. There's some birth rate that each of the age categories can produce newborns in the next time step. So these coefficients from each of the four age categories tell us how many newborns are in the next time step. And some of these might be zero, maybe this F1 is often zero, since newborns are not ready yet to uh, reproduce in the next, they might have to wait until they're in a higher age category to do that. But that's what these, these four coefficients, these Fi's, do. They are the fecundity coefficients, and they act on all the categories to produce the newborns in the next time step. So there's my matrix model. This tells me how my matrix develops over time, how my vector develops over time, according to these fecundity coefficients and these survival coefficients. These are irreducible matrices. I defined that in the previous video. That means that the strong form of Perrin Frobenius applies and there is a unique largest eigenvalue um, that is going to determine the behavior. And this is the, the really lovely thing about using that theorem is all we essentially need to know is we need to know that largest eigenvalue. 
If that largest eigenvalue is less than one, the population will decay, it's not viable. If that largest eigenvalue is larger than one, the population will grow, it is viable. If that largest eigenvalue is exactly one, the population will stay exactly where it is, it's stable. In this way, the largest eigenvalue determines the behavior. And this, this is a really good example of the thing that I said in the previous week, that in many systems, uh, in applied mathematics using linear algebra, all we often have to do is just calculate eigenvalues and then interpret them. And this is, this is a, a classic example of that. We've got this complicated system of age structures and populations. All we need to know is an eigenvalue, and that determines how the behavior of the system goes. The eigenvector is actually going to determine the age ratios. So the eigenvector is, is going to be the vector that the state approaches, um, and it's going to give us since it can be scaled however we want, it's not going to give us absolute population, but it'll give us the ratio of how many category 1 to category 2, how many category 1 to category 3. And that might also be interesting information. We may, we may want the age ratio to approach a certain value. So let's do some examples and do some analysis. So here is a Leslie matrix. These are my survival coefficients. Again, this is a four age category, so I'm thinking about some kind of small mammal with a life expectancy of four years. 80% of them survive from newborn to year one, 60% survive to year two, 70% survive to year three, and then after year three from year four on, um, I'm not counting them anymore. I'm only counting them that far. And then in the first year and the second year, there is no reproduction, but in their third and fourth years, for each member of the population, we have a reproduction rate of 0.7 and 0.6 for those two age categories. So those are your fecundity coefficients. And the question is, is this population viable? Well, I look at the eigenvalue, and I've calculated all of this by computer because, of course, I'm not going to do any of these types of eigenvalues and eigenvectors by hand. And this tells me that the dominant eigenvalue is less than one. This population is not viable. These survival rates are too low. These fecundity rates are too low for this population to produce enough to replace itself, and it will start to decay. As it decays, its age ratios are going to, pro going to approach the age ratios given in this eigenvector. So for that each member of the population in the last age category, there'll be approximately 1.19 in the third, 1.65 in the second, and 1.72 in the first. Again, those are ratios. Those are not absolute populations. The absolute value of the population, how many we actually have, depend on the start, which I haven't given. All right, so this is a population that is not viable. I'm going to change exactly one coefficient, the fecundity of category 3, and see what happens. So it changed from 0.7 to 1.1, and I calculate the eigenvalue again, and this time I actually do get a population that's viable. So if you were doing, say, conservation biology, and you had a way to control the fecundity by providing more resources or providing more space or removing certain threats so that it was more reasonable for the population to reproduce, you could know if this model was an accurate model that you need to get to a reproduction rate of 1.1 to actually make this population viable um, if you're only changing the reproduction rate for age category 3. And we get a different ratio of the population as we go on in time. All right, let me change some more coefficients and get an entirely new model here. So here I have still something that looks like it could perhaps be a small mammal with a uh, life expectancy of four years, but I have a much smaller survival rate of the newborn population. Only 40% survive their first year. But I have a higher fecundity rate that for every member of the population in age category three, their reproduction is going to produce two new members of the population, and in age category four, another one member of the population. So I have some, something that sort of has balanced itself out. I've got lower survival but higher fecundity. Does that still lead to a viable population? I calculate the eigenvalue, it does. I look at the age ratios, this makes sense. I now have many, many more newborns, many more members of the population in the first age category, because only a small number of them actually survive past that. Uh, the survival into the higher age categories, if you live your first year in this particular population, you're pretty likely to keep surviving. So these numbers are actually pretty close to each other, but it makes sense that this age category one actually has a much higher population because again, only 40% will survive past that age category. Let's look at a very different population. So instead of thinking about 
uh, small mammals. Let me think about something that's more appropriate to fish or insects. So here I only have a 3% survival rate of the first age category. So 97% of the first age category don't survive. So only a very, very small portion of the population survive. Uh, past that, if you get past the, the first age category, maybe this is a smaller age category in months. Maybe this is still years for fish, who knows. Um, we have a pretty good survival rate, and then we have a very high fecundity rate, so that each individual in category three is actually going to produce 150 new newborn individuals in the next age category. So a very high fecundity rate, but a very low survival rate. And again, I can ask for the eigenvalue, and here I get a very large eigenvalue. This population is not only going to grow, it's going to grow very, very quickly, 1.63, 63% uh, uh, growth in each step. So I'm going to get a, a very, very quickly growing population. So this fecundity is, is high enough that this 0 0.03 still is not going to prevent the population from growing. If I look at the age ratios, as I would expect, if only 0.3% of the population get past their first age category, I'm going to have many, many more members of the population in category 1. And then categories 2, 3, and 4 are all going to be fairly close to each other. All right, say this was an invasive species and I didn't want it to be viable. So in, in biological problems, sometimes we want viability, sometimes we don't want viability. So how would I change this to reduce my eigenvalue so that my population is no longer viable? Well, let me first reduce the fecundity. Say I can control this and reduce this from 150 and 50 to 50 and 30. And I can calculate the eigenvalue again. And even though I've dropped these a lot, this is still a viable population which is interesting. The age structure has changed a little bit. It's not quite as skewed, but it's still the vast majority of the members of this population are in that first age category, because again, only 3% of them survive past the first age category. So this is enough. I've dropped the fecundity, but it's still a viable population. Let me now drop the survival. Say that instead of 3%, only 1% survive with the same uh, fecundity rates and the same 90% survival past that first year. This now drops the eigenvector or eigenvalue less than one. So this is now a population which is no longer viable. So again, if I was trying to control a disease or an infectious species or some kind of thing, and I could do something to the environment to change these coefficients, and if this model was reliable, uh, then I would know that I would have to get this number down to 1% uh, with these particular fecundity coefficients in order for the population to start to decay. And again, a new age structure. Uh, these things are not, in fact, exactly the same, but the differences are in the third decimal point. So uh, they're almost the same at this point in time. And again, I have far more members of the population in age category one than in any of the higher age categories. That's the idea of Leslie matrices, and hopefully this is a more concrete example that sort of shows you how I'm actually going to analyze a model when I know what the states are. The states are the populations in certain age categories, and I know what the coefficients are. Notice that everything here is non-negative. I talked a lot about non-negative matrices in the first video. It makes sense. These are all population values and survival and fecundity. Those can't be negative. It doesn't make sense to have negative survival. It doesn't make sense to have negative age ratios. So it's also really, really nice that the dominant eigenvalue gives us an eigenvector with all non-negative entries. Again, this makes sense for what the system is trying to do. So hopefully this shows you how the theorems and ideas and theory from the first video actually work out in practice for a concrete example.